All right, so why don't we start with, we'll start with the basic stuff here, okay? So let's talk about um, the health of the game, where it's at, um, and just kind of take a look at what I've been able to find. So let's start with the financial side. This is a document that was, um, you can find it on the internet. Um, it looks like this was made during or for the purchase of um, of uh, Cryptic Studios or um, the purchase from uh, PWE by the Embracer Group or Gearbox. They're all, you know, link subsidiaries and all this kind of thing. It's too complicated. But anyways, uh, so basically the, the the gist of this is the revenue of 240 plus million. Um, this is for the lifetime of the game, I believe. Um, so what I've done is I've averaged that out over 12 years so we can get kind of an idea of, you know, what the game makes on average per year, okay, for the particular game. So we're looking at uh, 21 uh, million, almost 22 million per year, which is pretty good. Rob, what's up, man? I love you too. <laughs> Thanks for the, uh, the, the, we'll call it a resub because re membership, re up in the membership. We got to, we got to think of some better terms for YouTube. Dude, this headphone is driving me nuts. Um, Kale had also mentioned, um, last year that 2021 or earlier this year was basically a record breaking year from them because this number here is just an average out from that total number that I found. Um, so, you know, there's probably some years that weren't that good. Um, so I'm assuming if they're having a record breaking year, that was much, much better. You take inflation, all those kinds of things earlier years in the game were probably a much smaller number. Um, so my guess is, you know, we're probably looking at, you know, 30 plus is just my guess and I'm just guessing. So, you know, I don't have anything to back that up exactly. Um, so from a money standpoint, the game looks like it's healthy. It, it, you know, if that is the total revenue per year, we know what their staff looks like and those kinds of things. Rob shows up and then here comes the bots, huh? <laughs> um, so from a health standpoint, to me, it looks like they're doing just fine. And based on what Kale told us, um, the, you know, the, the game had a very, very good year last year. And I know it started picking up the year before that. We call it the COVID bump, right? Um, where... You know, people were just home, they had more money because they weren't out spending it and they were playing the game. So from a dollar standpoint, that all looks good. Now that only continues to look good if people continue to play the game. So that's really what that comes down to, right? So let, let's take a look at, at that. All right, so the only statistics, well, not the only, but the, the majority of the, the playing, you know, player statistics that I could find was on Steam. Um, because they track launches from that. I, I cut it off at um, around 2016. I'll, I'll expand the whole thing out just so we can kind of see here. So we have release, and then this looks like when it was purchased by uh, PWE and went free to play. So we had a huge, huge bump. And you can see over time, I didn't start playing until like 2017, 2018. Um, so as it went free to play and you had Romulus, uh, the Romulus expansion and some of those other things uh, did, you know, the, the, these first, you know, five years were, were probably the best years for the game. A lot of people played through and, you know, and moved on. Let me go ahead and just shrink this down here a little bit. Let's take it to like 2016. because so I think that gives us a little better baseline here over the past, what is that, uh, two, six years? Okay. So... Let's look at, let's just start with kind of the average number here. So it looks like we're hovering right around 25, 2000 to 2500, you know, logins basically a day on average via Steam's launcher. Okay. Um, and you'll see that there's these spikes and it drops off. And so what these are, are content drops and or events, right? So you have a pretty consistent kind of line and we have this kind of weird dip here. So I was looking into this and this was right around the time the foundry was closed. Um, there was also some major, major server issues um, leading up to December, I remember, th through this time. And uh, they ended up getting them fixed, and they ended up giving us, like, all kinds of, like, extra, you know, free stuff. Uh, Phoenix boxes, and a bunch, this is before Tier 6 coupons. Um, and, you know, so I felt like they made up for that, and they got, you know, that together. But that really, closing the foundry really hurt the game. And I wish I would have taken a little bit more advantage of that um, when it was around. I just started kind of checking it out and that kind of thing. And then literally like the next month, they they are like, yeah, we're, we're going to be um, <laughs> we're going to be closing that. I was like, God dang it. Um, so and then we have COVID hit and that really, 
bumped this back up and put us back on really a trajectory that we've been seeing pretty steady here. So what I did is I extrapolated from these kind of averages from Steam and I wanted to know, okay, well, everybody's not using Steam, right? So we went, I went through and I ran a poll here. We have about 600 people voted in it. So I think it's fairly decent. Um, so basically about half the player base is using Steam, okay? So if we go with the lower number uh, from Steam for that average at 2,000 players a day, we're talking about 4,000 players you know, a day that are, that are playing the game. Um, so I just broke down the, you know, from Steam, what we have congruent players on Steam. And I took a sample just from 2019, but that stretches back to 2016. Uh, these are our percentages. I, I plugged these in last night and this has dropped by 1%. But anyway, it's not a huge deal to give us this 4,000 people a day. And I've actually heard this number before. Now, that isn't necessarily all the same people logging in every single day, right? So you have a lot of people that this is kind of their side game or their second or third game. Uh, so it's not the same amount of people logging in every single day. So what I would probably do is look at, you know, some of these spikes and we're probably looking at active users, you know, being somewhere around, I don't know, 10,000 plus people uh, in general. If we look over, say, a quarter where we can include an event or a new content drop. Um, so. That's kind of my feeling is probably active users that are, you know, playing the game. They may not log in every single day like we do or like I do, um, but they have the game installed and, and they're using it. Now, for console, there's not a lot of information here. The only thing I was able to find, uh, Casual SAB sent me this. Um, so PSN uh, profile for the game. And there's uh, almost 70,000 people that own the game. That doesn't really tell us a lot, right? Because I can add a game to, you know, the cart and never download it, never play it, but I am shown as owning it. Um, so there really wasn't a lot that I could pull from this to give me any kind of real info on console. Um, I would guess that it's probably very similar to PC, if not maybe a hair less, maybe. It's really hard to tell because if we look at like videos like Triz's or... Um, I've done a couple that were kind of more console centric, at least in terms of news, and they probably perform about 75% less, you know, or as well as what, you know, the, the, the PC ones do. Um, so I, I would say it's probably very similar numbers to PC. So that would put us, if it is, and again, we're just kind of extrapolating here with the limited information we have then that would put us at, um, you know, running probably somewhere around six to 8,000 congruent players a day uh, with a maximum of 15 to 20,000 players, you know, active total um, that are logging in, you know, here and there. So the primary players along with uh, players that this is their secondary or tertiary game, game they just log into every now and then, but play it or just log in and play the content drops. There's a lot of people that log in and just play, you know, the new content drops or maybe the event if there's something that they like, but they're not logging in daily, you know, so they finished all the story missions, they enjoyed them, but they're not interested in, you know, in game, right? In game can be whatever it is you, you want it to be really. So chasing the deeps, um, you know, role playing, all those different kinds of things. I like to chase the deeps, but more than anything, the reason I like to do that is because I view, you know, ship and character building as, as a puzzle. And there's a whole bunch of different, you know, puzzles you can put together. So for me, that's what I like to do. But there's a lot of people that are not, they're not into any of that. They just like playing Star Trek. They want to be a part of that. And new content drops come out and then they return and play. So I, I think that it's pretty safe to say that, you know, we're looking at, you know, probably six, 6,000 a day across all platforms. Um, on average with, you know, a maximum player base of, you know, probably 15 mil or 15,000, you know, give or take, it could be higher than that, especially when, you know, larger content drops come out. So from a number standpoint, so dollar wise, we know they had, you know, one of their best years last year. We know in general, the, the, the company's profitable, right? The game is profitable. That's why it's been around for so long. That's why, um, Gearbox just bought it. They wouldn't have bought the game if it's not profitable and wouldn't continue to be profitable. Um, and I was looking through to see, okay, well, what other games does Cryptic Studios have? So they have Neverwinter. Um, 
and the overall dollar amounts they've made on Neverwinter is higher. But if you look at current players, um, STO is about the same, if not beating it now. Um, so that tells me that Gearbox bought S STO, really, right? I mean, they are making money off some of those other things. But um, so from what I can see here from, from these numbers, and again, we can extrapolate like we just did, but just because we can visually see these, I'm seeing a steady continuation of the way that the game has always performed. Um, so let's talk about the sentiment and some of that, right? Okay, so I, I did a poll on how satisfied are you with the state of the game currently? So very satisfied is 5% uh, satisfied. So, you know, they're just happy with it. 55, not satisfied, 40. I think that if I had ran this at any time in the life of the game, pretty much or over the last six years, we would probably get a very, very similar poll. And I think the reason for that is for people that come into the game new, um, you know, and are playing through all the story, they played through all of them, maybe they get through, you know, maybe making multiple characters and then they're getting to the place where, you know, it's like, man, there's all these systems I can explore and ways to build my ship. And it, it holds that attention for quite a while. I played the game for probably about three years or so um, and thought, you know, I, I've beat it. I've done everything there is. And, and then I, you know, found out about, you know, really how to build ships and some of these other systems. And it just, you know, reopened everything, you know, up for me and I continued to play it. And then obviously I was stuck with it. Um, but I think what happens is, is that you have people that are on that journey and they're liking it, right? The bugs are annoying and things like that. And I think that's why we see this just satisfied. Um, and then what happens is as players, you know, get to the quote unquote end game, I think they become less satisfied because there's less to do. It is whatever it is you make it. And then you put the bugs and the log in issues and things like that on top of it. And I think that's why that drives this sentiment up. Um, if we look at, you know, the Reddit posts that the, uh, the guy did that was spending $200 a month, he had, you know, f for him, it was, you know, he, he detailed it out pretty well. I, and I'll, I'll add that link to the de, uh, the description after we're done here. So if you guys want to want to check that out, Goss has a has a really good kind of overview on that. But his complaint was that you know the content has been very light, and he's not wrong. Um, you know, you figure we're getting a couple hours of playable content a year. Um, that's that's not a lot compared to you know history or not. Uh, yeah, his, our history is life uh, compared to victory is life. That was an, an entire arc that was dropped, you know, um, and, and when you look at the live streams, it always comes back to, you know, we don't have the manpower. We don't have these things. I get all that, but that doesn't change the reality of the fact that there's just not a lot of content being dropped to it. So players that have played long, long term, I think, are starting to find themselves in a place where I don't have anything to do and the bugs are too great to where it's just too frustrating and I think with a lot of people, it's not that they're quitting Star Trek Online altogether, but it they're finding a new main game, right? And then they're coming back and they are doing, uh, you know, events when they do come out and all the things that, you know, that, that we just discussed. Um, and I think that is to a certain degree that has been the case for the lifetime of the game. That's why we see a chart that looks like this, where it's always just kind of been just steady, you know, where it is, even if we go back, you know, other than when it went first free to play and there was you know all the hype and stuff, uh, but still these numbers aren't massively higher than where they are currently. You know, it, it, you know, relatively speaking, that's not a massive, massive difference. Now for the game, relatively speaking, it is, but in general, it, it, it's not a huge, huge difference. Um, and that's just the nature of the game, the nature of the way that they wanted to run the game. And so I, I think we're just seeing kind of a continuation of it. Um, but overall, I think the game is in as good of health as it has been you know, over the past, you know, 10 years or so, I'm not seeing any kind of major drop off in, you know, the, the amount of people playing it, um, based on, you know, the revenue numbers we've been able to find and statements that have been made, um, by kale, they're doing well. Um, so I can say with confidence, the game is not dying, but the sentiment, um, you know, in this, t you know, tighter knit community that, you know, plays with each other and involves themselves on the streams and things like that, there, you're, you're going to get some of that negative disgruntledness and, and those kinds of things. And that really comes from not a lot of people, you know, and when I see a post like this guy on Reddit, I, I don't think it's, you know, he wasn't pooping on, you know, the people that make the game or being a jerk or anything like that. He had legitimate issue, you know, issues and things that he didn't like and made a decision that he wasn't going to spend money on the game anymore. Um, and I hope that 
you know, that the guys, you know, over in the, and guys and girls over at, um, at Cryptic, you know, look at some of that stuff and, you know, make some changes. And again, I understand there's all, I don't want to call them excuses. I mean, the reasons, you know, that, you know, their staff and this and that will hire more people, you know, um, it's a great IP, and I mean, it could really go to the next level. Now, based on what I'm seeing here, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen because, you know, the status quo is working, and, you know, if it's working, then a lot of times you, you don't see a change there. But hopefully, with this purchase, we might see something long term. It hasn't happened yet, um, but it, again, it, it's just a matter of perspective of where, you know, where you're coming in. If you're newer, you've only been playing for a couple of years. None of this is an issue, right? But if you're end game. You've played every single thing in the game multiple times. Um, you you you're either RPing, you're chasing the DPS, you're just flying around looking at your beautiful ships. You know, because I mean the ship models are gorgeous. You know, they look great. I mean they they they're just awesome, and you can't get that anywhere else. You know, um, so anyways, I'll, I'll keep kind of circularly ranting here about this, but that that's my overall take on where we're at. Okay, so financially looking good playership um you know is what it has been um and i think sentiment you know if you get outside of our bubble is where it always has been people love the game they love star trek um but if you're again it's